This recording is a second example of simplifying a composite hyperbolic function that involves an inverse hyperbolic function as part of it. In particular, in this second example, we're interested in simplifying y equals cosh of inverse than of x as an algebraic function of x. And in the previous example from a, another maths cast on this, we found it was convenient to start by letting the inside function which here is inverse than of x, be equal to another letter, let's say t. So in this case I'm going to let t equal inverse than of x. Then we can rearrange this to make x the subject by taking than of both sides in this case. So doing that and then swapping the left and right hand sides of the equation will give us x equals than of t. Now this is quite helpful because the substitution t equals inverse than of x, that can also allow us to write y as cosh of t. And then what we need to do is find some sort of hyperbolic function identity that relates cosh t and than of t. Can you think of such an identity? Well, you might be able to, but more commonly, one of the major identities you'll see involving than of t is that than squared t equals 1 minus shek squared t. Is that identity any help to us? Well actually yes, ultimately that will be helpful because cosh of t is just 1 divided by shek of t or equivalently shek of t is 1 divided by cosh t. So we could use this identity to start off with to give us some sort of algebraic expression for shek of t and once we have that at the end we could then get y by just looking at 1 divided by this expression for shek of t and that would then give us what we want. So let's have a look at how we would proceed from here. And remember that than squared t is just than of t all squared. So because we know x was than of t, than squared t can just be rewritten as x squared in this case. So x squared is equal to 1 minus shek squared of t. And we can then rearrange this to make shek squared of t the subject. So when we do a bit of algebraic rearrangement, in this case we in fact get shek squared t equals 1 minus x squared which means that normally what we would do from there algebraically is just say shek of t must therefore be plus or minus the square root of what's on the other side of the equation. That is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. But is this the case here? I'm putting a question mark there. Let's just proceed assuming that's okay for now but we'll look at this plus or minus more carefully in a minute. If we just continued with that reasoning for now though, we said that cosh t was 1 divided by shek t, so that would suggest cosh t would just be 1 divided by plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. But again, is this really true? Would both the positive or negative alternatives actually be realistic here? And to see whether this is realistic, we need to think about the graph of the function we're considering. And if we just think about even a very simple graph, y equals cosh x, y equals cosh of x looks like this. The lowest value it ever takes is 1. So cosh of anything, even if this particular function we have will look a bit different to that, cosh of any value is never ever negative. So therefore, we should only be considering the positive alternative here. And therefore we have found that the original expression we were looking for which was cosh of inverse than of x, we now know that that is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. Or in other words if we rewrote that as y being a function of x, y is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. So we started off by letting t be the inside function which was our inverse hyperbolic function, in this case inverse than of x. 
we then found an identity that related the two things we were interested in and rearranged that. And then, very importantly, we then had to think about the behaviour of the function we're actually looking at. And in this case, because cosh of t or cosh of anything is always positive, we knew that the negative would not be realistic here. So therefore, we finally concluded that we could rewrite the cosh of inverse than of x as y equals 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared.